we, we've been studying various Jesus teachings of them. And, and um, so I just thought tonight we would look at, we would look at um, we have a couple of things that, that makes to, to show that Jesus, Jesus came to show us the way, a new way. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna jump around a little bit in scripture. We're gonna talk about some of the differences between um, Christianity, uh, different um, doctrines and whatnot. And so here we go. Uh, now you know tonight if if you have like a quick understanding question, um, you 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 can jump in if you like. Um, and then at the end we will we will um, talk about all this. All right, so just Jesus way. Remember Jesus, the spiritual kingdom. He taught the spiritual kingdom and love. Remember his two commandments. Jesus commandments were love God and love your neighbor. Okay. So going to introduce you to an Aramaic word tonight that is very significant with regard to its its meaning and application to Jesus teachings uh, from Aramaic, so to speak. Okay, and the word is Bashemi. In Aramaic, it means in my name. And it infers in my way, method or system of doing things. Another way to put it would be to do wonders, healing and speaking. In or with my understanding or consciousness of life and God. <coughs> Hold on just a sec. But, but basically, it means do it the way that I have been doing it. Do it the way that I have taught you. Practice the teachings the way that I have showed you. Now, there, there's some problem. Well, there's, there's some contradictions with some doctrines with with this idea and so i what i thought i would do is is i i'm going to relate a couple things that this has to do <clears throat> that makes a difference now okay now christians all right believe that uttering the name of jesus will bring about desired results. Now, this is a tough way to put it, but you all know that everything, uh, um, Christian prayers and whatnot, in Jesus' name, we pray. Once again, we're not condemning this, and uh, and there are, um, uh, uh, it, it depends on the heart of the people, okay, uh, where, where they're at. But just wanted to, to point out this difference. So I got a couple of scriptures here, and then we're going to look at we're going to look at a a, um, a, a little example meaning of this. All right, J John sixteen twenty three. In that day, you will not ask me anything. Truly, truly, I say to you that whatever you ask my Father. In my name, he will give it to you. Now, what I like to do, what I like to do here is when you get to in my name. Now, it's just, it, it is, it is uh, common that if you, as I, as I said before, say in, in Jesus name, that if you say the name and invoke his name, that that's, that that will get your desired results. However, if you put in here, I say to you, whatever you ask my father, 
the way that you taught me, he will give it to you. All right. And the same same situation here, Mark 9, 37. Whoever receives a child like this in my name, he receives me. And he who receives me does not receive me, but him who has sent me. A uh, couple of things here. Now, and, and here, when he says, in, in, in you receive a child in my name, he's talking about receive this child with love and compassion, okay? Because that's Jesus' main teaching, love, compassion. Um, and notice it says, if you receive this child like this, he receives me. And he who receives me, and he, wait a minute, and he who receives me does not receive me, but, okay, but does not receive him, Jesus, okay, so, but but him who has sent me now one of the other one of the other kind of differences is that jesus always referred back to his father in this case him who has sent me he never he never said that he himself was the one that did all the healings he always referred back to his his father, and <clears throat> so now this is a little little explanation that um, that Dr. Lanza has put forth um, in defense of th this idea. All right, merely uttering. The name Jesus will not bring about the desired results any more than just pronouncing the name of Einstein would cause the atom to split. And so I'm going to I'm going to read this to help us understand the idea. Let me illustrate it with the work of Dr. Albert Einstein. Okay, physicists use Dr. Einstein's symbol or formula in splitting the atom. However, these sciences do not speak directly to the atom and say, in the name of Einstein, atom split. They use this, his method for splitting the atom, okay? In a certain sense, every time these scientific doctors split the atom, they do so in Einstein's name, but they do not utter his name while going through the scientific procedure. So this is the, this is the argument for in his name, um, you do it according to the way that Jesus taught you. And just uttering the name doesn't, now we we make it we make an exception here. Does it necessarily mean, all right? Because because remember when you when someone is 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 saying or healing or whatnot, it's it's what it's what they believe and what's in their heart. So sometimes maybe just saying Jesus' name would work, but it depends on what is in the 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 person's the healer's uh, heart. And, and mind. Okay. So that, that's Beshemi in my name. And we got a couple more. Okay. And wonders will follow those who believe these things. In my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues and they will handle snakes. And if they should drink any poison of death, it will not harm them. And they will lay their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Okay, so this is this is the example. Now, in 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 my name means here the way that Jesus taught them. 
And remember, the, the apostles went out and then many more. Uh, Jesus taught them how. It, you know, I hate to say how, but because we think of courses, you know, now you take courses and it's, you do this, you do this and that. But, but, but he did, but, but he did uh, teach them in a way. He gave them, he gave them the experience of the power of God, the presence of God. And they went out. So it was not just a matter of uttering Jesus' names and that they would cast, then, then they could cast out demons. Okay. And just an interest, I put this verse in here because it's always it's always a interesting. Okay. Again, I say to you that if two of you are worthy on earth. Anything that they would ask will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Now, this, uh, this that many many people have lots of things to say about this, um, but but what the idea here is in the in the in the and it still exists in the ancient with Hebrews. Okay, they had well Hebrew. We call it Hebrew court. All right, and it was called Beit Din. And the the word Beit means house, Din means judge. So. Um, The, the <clears throat> Beit be Din was a Torah principle, okay, for established, and, and basically the Beit Din means judgment. It was a court, okay? And the thing that I really like about this, that, that no one thinks about it, is that, okay, the Hebrew court, the Beit requires, and and you'll see it elsewhere in the Bible. When you have two, uh, you had to have two or more uh, witnesses. Let's say to to, to let's say that, uh, that so that we understand it, in order to establish a judgment or guilt or whatever. So, but the 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 idea here from the Bible from the Torah. It requires that two or more parties petition God to obtain his judgment rather than following man's judgment. So if you hear and, and you read you read that all the time where two or more are gathered and um, and you know Jesus is there. Culturally, culturally you'll see it's like where people where two or more people, and essentially they were talking about men more than likely that were together discussing politics and all of that. That's culturally where that came from, um, that, that Jesus would be there. His, he would be being talked about and maybe his influence. But just thought you might all like to know what Viet Din is because it has come up for me a few times and I had to, I had to find out what it was. Okay. Now, let's look at Jesus' name. Okay. Jesus' name, and that's Jesus, means it's Ishwa in Aramaic, by the way. And it means Yahweh saves, or Yahweh is another word for God. All right. But it's kind of gotten confused here. It does not mean that Jesus saves, okay? Um, but again, you know, um, religions form um, their doctrines and their dogmas and whatnot. And uh, many times you will see that it's Jesus that saves, but it means Yahweh saves. Now, all right, 
some more controversial stuff, but um, so in Matthew one twenty one, okay, this is the birth stories. All right, she will give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay, now we're going to talk about that a little bit. So the so-called secret of Jesus' name then is to realize, to experience, and to understand the same spiritual equations or mental equivalents as Jesus. Now, uh, forgive these big words, uh, but uh, it's a quote from Dr. Erico. Um, but it's to realize, to experience, and to understand Jesus' teachings the way he taught. Okay. Now, we're going to look at, this is where, this is where the East and the West um, are different. And, um, and it's also the reason the East and the West split way back in the fourth century. So, he shall save his people from his sins. Now, Christianity, we always say, um, well, I, I ask, uh, I was talking with, with, the, with a lady uh, one day and, uh, you know, I mean, there was nothing, we, it, it was a nice conversation, but I, I always, I always sort of advise people, you know, what, what we teach, and then she, I think she said something about, well, you know, are, are you a Christian? And of course, I always go, you know, uh, well, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, but basically, and, and she just said, well, you know, it just all comes down to one question. And the question was, do you believe Jesus died for your sins? All right. And of course, of course, I said, well, no, you know, not really. And it was no big deal, but it kind of, but it kind of brought, brought the, the, the Christian thing back to me. So here's the difference. Western Christian doctrine, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And I think we're all familiar with that, so we're not going to go into detail. But, um, Eastern Christian doctrine, and this is from the Aramaic, okay? I just put it like this. All right, and this is from the Aramaic. Jesus died because of our sins. Now, how does, okay, just, just based strictly on translation. Now, remember Dr. Dr. Lamsa uh, knew the context. All right, it, it just, it's all based on 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 one word. Um, uh, the word is metal. I didn't put it in here, but um, but it is because of and not for. So you can kind of start thinking and understanding what this <laughs> what this means, and it has caused some furor, uh, but. Think about it. Jesus, Jesus was challenged all the time. Jesus went to the cross uh, for no reason, for no crime whatsoever, uh, because he challenged the religion. And um, and um, so he 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 died because I say because of the sins of the people of, of the time. Um, and the people like the Pharisees and whatnot, they didn't even, they didn't even think they, they were they were sinning. They were too busy defending their dogma, their doctrine, and whatnot. So that's 
that's just one of the major differences. And that's also how, remember, the Christianity, early Christianity until the third and fourth century, I mean, it was, it was early Christianity. It was kind of like one body, but they were fighting all the time, in and out. Mostly they were fighting whether Jesus was God or not. And so that was that. But Constantine is the guy that did the split. And Constantine became a Christian convert. And then he said, okay, people will, you, everyone will be our kind of Christian. And, and I think we all know that Constantine, you know, just mandated, okay, this is our Christianity. And that's where the Greek comes from. But that, that, was, the, that was the split. And so, uh, and from, from Aramaic, it's just different. But most of the, the teachings from Aramaic do, um, are reflected in Eastern Christianity, okay? So let's just look at this to see if we can, we can understand it better. It is often said that Jesus died for our sins and that our sins could never have been forgiven without his death. The primary meaning of the Aramaic word mitol is because of or on account of and lastly for we understand this to mean that jesus died because of our sins and not for them at that time sinful men sacrificed jesus as the lamb of god jesus told his disciples that he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men and put to death god being a loving father does not need to be appeased by his children with sacrifices. No caring, kindly human father would try to appease his wrath by putting one of his sons to death. Okay, now it's getting pretty strong here, guys. So, but hang in here. All right. Yet in God's, in John's gospel, we read that when Jesus forgave sinners, all he said was, go and sin no more. He did not say, offer something to appease God's wrath. Jesus taught forgiveness of sin differently. Um, okay, and now I have another verse. And... <clears throat> Well, let, let's, let's just read this, and then we're going to talk about sacrifice. And while they were guests in the house, a great many tax collectors and sinners came, and they sat as guests with Jesus and with his disciples. This is the house of Matthew, the guy that wrote uh, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your master eat with tax gatherers and sinners. But when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well need no doctor, but those who are seriously sick. Go and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. Where I came not to invite righteous men, but sinners. Now, this idea of mercy and not sacrifice, this is what Jesus was fighting the whole time. Remember, in that time, um, the, the temple in Jerusalem, uh, actually the temple in Jerusalem was one of the major economic uh, forces uh, there. Um, the, the authorities there had become corrupt. Um, and, and because sacrificing, that, that was atonement for sins. They had to sacrifice by their animals, sacrifice it. And, um, and Jesus, and, and it had, in other words, 
it almost even in the Old Testament, it starts out with Abraham. It starts off with love, okay. And so by this time, when Jesus got there, it was everything was taken over. Um, you know, the money, the uh, the, um, uh, the 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 temple. You know, you had to you had to buy uh, whatever doves, sheep, or whatever, and everybody had to do that. The poor. And um, so, so the the sacrifice they had lost they had lost the idea of love, and and mercy and whatnot. They were focused on the temple sacrifices and the rituals. Um, the Pharisees, and that's why they got on Jesus here. Um, this was just only one of the reasons why <coughs> the Pharisees kept <coughs> persecuting Jesus. Because, okay, they had something that's called the laws of the elders. Now, this wasn't the written law. This was the laws of the elders. And, and you, were, you were not allowed to eat with sinners. You were not allowed to associate with sinners. And tax gatherers were considered the worst sinners. Why? Because they did their own thing. And they they um, they collected overtaxed people and whatnot. So, um, but the Pharisees, it's like Jesus shouldn't be eating with them because that was their strict ritual, <coughs> and that's what got Jesus in trouble. So, <coughs> I just wanted to I just wanted to bring that out. And. So to summarize, all right, so what was Jesus for? Basically, what we have, <coughs> we know that we have Jesus' two commandments, love God and love your neighbor, okay? And what Jesus, Jesus' way is action and not just I say not just belief. Now, now the Christianity, Western Christianity, um, you know, has developed their doctrine for you must believe in Jesus. Okay, like I say, you need to believe that He died for your sins, and that's that's the that's at the heart of their doctrine and whatnot. Again, we're not con we're not really um, condemning that. But what Jesus was after was, okay, action is love your neighbor, love God. And um, just another, just a, a comment, um, you know, um, Jesus, well, again, and Western Christianity, um, we're waiting for Jesus to come back. And we're waiting for Jesus to come back and fix things, are we not? Um, we, you can earn, but but what what Jesus was saying then, and what many are try are seeing now, and is that it's it's his teachings. It's what each and every one of us do to practice his teachings, um, because I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's been more than 2,000 years when people are waiting for Jesus to come back and fix things. So that's just a, you know, that, that, that's just a comment. But so what is the, the formula? And this is, this, is <clears throat> this is by Dr. Erico, okay? that this loving presence, which is God, is everyone's source of all good and all joy. That every individual is fully capable of demonstrating the good she or he truly expects and anticipates from that very source we call God. That we are not helpless creatures, we are children 
of the living God. That God who is life and joy is all that we need. That our faith, love, and devotion are one with this living presence and source of all life. Okay, so that's Jesus' way. And I'll just uh, thank everybody for their contributions. And I put this up now. I'll tell you a little bit about this book. And uh, um, this is this is <clears throat> Dr. Ergo's book. And this is his presentation of Jesus from the Aramaic. Now, uh, and I mean, there, there are various subjects and whatnot in here. Uh, 